Howdy, how you doing? I'm Mystic7, and this is my farm. Now this week is bigger than a mama cow pregnant with quadruplets because Sunflower Land has officially dropped their public beta, as you could see here, which is what I'm playing. My farm is kind of cracked. I've been playing this game for a couple weeks. I'm pretty addicted. I set timers all day long so I know when my crops are done. <laughs> and today I'm going to talk about how you can get in and play this game yourself. And then we're going to go through and give kind of a comprehensive guide on basically how Sunflower Land works, what everything is inside of your farm, how to do it, how to progress, and the best strategies to get her done, baby. I also will say that I have a, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop the Texas accent. Keep the hat though. I have a Discord server and we have a channel dedicated to Sunflower Land. So if you wanna come in, theory craft with us or uh, get access to some guys and resources, make sure to join the Discord. My Discord link in the description, GM7. Just join and then pick the Sunflower Land role and it will open up the chat for you so you can hop in and hang out with the Sunflower Gang. And of course, if you have questions, that's where to ask them. Okay, let's get in to Sunflower Land. So for starters, how do you play this game? How can you get it? You're gonna need one main thing, and that is a MetaMask wallet, a crypto wallet. Now, I made a video on my crypto channel talking about how to make a MetaMask wallet along with some other popular Web3 wallets. So I'll leave that link in the description and on screen, feel free to click that, but you need a MetaMask. Easy to make, it's free. And then once you have your wallet, you'll need to add the Polygon network to your MetaMask wallet. In your wallet, you should have the Ethereum network, and to add the Polygon network, you just click uh, this button right here, click add network, and then fill in all of the necessary information. I'll have this linked in the description below. You can just copy and paste it. And then once you have the information filled out, you just click save and it will add it to your wallet. It won't let me because I already have Polygon added to my wallet, but that's how you add Polygon. Then you'll need to get Matic onto your account. I also made a video talking about how to bridge Ethereum over to your Polygon wallet and then convert ETH to Matic. <laughs> it's kind of complicated. I made a video. I'll leave the link in the description, or you can just do some quick YouTube and Google Googling to figure out how to do that. Or you can just buy Matic on an exchange, I think like Coinbase, and just send it over to your MetaMask wallet. Either way, you'll have to either buy Matic or transfer your ETH or USDC or Dogecoin into Matic. And you're going to want at least, I'd say, three Matic. To Matic, maybe. Then you'll head to the sunflowerland.com website. I'll leave the link for that in the description. Click on the beta button. Then you select a charity, donate the amount of Matic that you want. You can at minimum donate one. And if you would like to donate more, you absolutely can. And then you just mint your farm. Important to know that you have to do this in order to play the game. You have to mint your farm by donating the Matic. It costs one Matic and there can be up to 100,000 farms minted total. I think currently there's about 30,000. And then voila, you're here in Sunflower Land. Now, let's give a guide on what's going on. Gameplay guide. For starters, you have your farm. These are your plots of land that you can plant and harvest crops on. Don't worry, we'll go over farming in a second. Above the farm, you have the barn, where you have animals that you can raise, like chicken, cow, pigs, and sheep. And then this tab is the rare tab. These are NFT that you can craft that give in-game uh, basically bonuses and benefits. Like the chicken coop allows you to collect three times the amount of eggs and it costs 100 wood, 50 gold, 2,000 eggs, and 50 SFL. Or you can just buy it on OpenSea which you can click right there. And then coming down from the barn, you've got your home where it shows your leveling and your skills. We'll go over this later. Outside of that, you've got the shop where you can buy plants, you can sell crops, and you can craft NFTs that again give certain benefits in game. Like this Nancy keeps a few crows away. Crops grow 15% faster if you have this. This golden cauliflower, you get double reward from cauliflowers, but as you can see, it is expensive to create, but you can always buy them on OpenSea. Okay, leaving the shop, you've got the wishing well, which is basically LP tokens. This is your, like more crypto DeFi stuff. We can talk about that in a different video. Then you've got the blacksmith where you can craft different tools like axes, pickaxes and whatnot. And then also you can craft more NFTs that are either collectibles like this one right here, or ones that have utility in game like the Woody Beaver, which increases your wood drops by 20%. Leaving the craft, the blacksmith, we've got the kitchen too, where you can create different kinds of foods. Now, what are these foods for? We'll go over that in a second. And then you've got your bank, which shows your, uh, basically your NFTs, and it shows the ability to withdraw or deposit the SFL token, which you can start doing on April 15th. Well, withdrawing. And finally, you've got your Taylor, where you can create a flag. I don't, I haven't created the American flag yet because it cost 50 SFL and I'm just not doing that. But um, yeah, you can make flags, cool. So you can, you know, stake your country on your, on your plot 
of land. Let's talk about how to farm and how to unlock your farm. When you start playing Sunflower Land, this piece of land up here and this piece of land down here will be locked. You will not be able to use those pieces of land. You only get these five little seeds right here. And why is that? Because these three goblins are in your way. And I'll show you how to get rid of them in a second, but just a quick crash course on the farming in this game. You head to the shop, you can go and buy different kinds of seeds, like I'll buy two more pumpkin seeds, so I have five total, and then you go into your land, and then you collect the crops that you have, and sometimes you get free ones like that. And then now I've got up here in the top right, I've got seven pumpkin seeds, and I'll just click to plant them, and it takes 30 minutes for these pumpkins to grow, and then I can harvest them in 30 minutes. And once I harvest them, I can go back into the shop, go over to sell, and as you can see, I've got a ton. We're gonna sell all this today, I can't wait. I've got a ton of crops just built up. So I've got 59 pumpkins. I can sell one at a time if I'd like, and you can see me getting SFL. My SFL count is in the top right. I've got 85 right now. Or I can sell all of them, which will give me 2.3 SFL, and now I have 87 SFL, which is the in-game currency that you'll be using to buy, sell, and trade items. And, you know, crops and all that fun stuff. So that's very simply how to farm. Now, how do you get these freaking goblins away? Well, if you go over to the kitchen, you can see there are four different food items. What you do is you farm the crop that you need in order to make these food items, come into the kitchen, craft the food item, and then go and give it to the goblin. Now I've already given this goblin its soup and these two goblins their food, but I've got one more goblin right here that I still need to feed. And as you can see, goblin farmer, do you want to know the secret to growing wheat? Perhaps a radish pie will refresh my memory. If I go into my shop, I cannot buy wheat seeds. I can't buy wheat and I can't plant wheat. Uh, it's locked. So to unlock that, I need to go into the kitchen and right here, the radish pie, I need to craft the radish pie and then give it to this goblin. The radish pie costs 60 radish and 30 SFL, and I have a ton of radishes uh, out right now. It takes 24 hours per radish, so it's gonna take me a couple days to be able to get that, but we'll get there. So by going to the kitchen, crafting the foods, you can unlock your entire farm, which will obviously maximize your ability to farm in the game. It's also important to know that there's only a limited amount of seeds in the shop at a time. Um, if I go over to beetroot, there's 53 in stock. If I go over to sunflower seeds, there's zero. Now, let's say I run out of seeds fully and I need to get more. How do you do it? You just click this sync button, which will sync your game, uh, your, your, your farm on chain, but you do have to pay a 0.1 Matic fee. Now, 0.1 Matic is like, barely any money at all. This is so cheap, it's insane. <laughs> but you do have to pay this every time you want to resync and get more seeds inside of your shop. I'm gonna reject that. There is a little bit of strategy when it comes to um, planting and syncing, and we'll talk about that later in the video as a part of the strategy section. Now there's more to this farm than just plants. There's also resources. And if I go into my items, I can show I've got 14 gold, 219 wood. I think this is nine uh, iron. Yes. And then I've got one stone. Now resources, where can you find them on the map? How do you get them? And what are they used for? Well, gold is a super duper useful uh, resource in this game. If I go to craft and I go to these rares, as you can see, um, there's actually gold for a lot. Well, I guess not this one. For the beaver, there's a lot of wood. But for some of these, it costs gold. Oh, this is iron. <laughs> Where's the gold ones, man? Oh yes, it's in the shop here in the rares. As you can see, this costs gold. What? Where's the gold? This costs gold. This costs gold. And up here in the barn, going in the barn to these guys, this costs a little bit of gold. You're gonna need gold in the game to be able to mint these NFTs that give you in-game utility. So how do you get gold and items for that matter? For starters, you need wood. You come down to this little guy right here, it says something looks different about these trees. You're gonna go into your blacksmith, craft an ax, it costs one SFL. I have a lot of SFL right now, but early in the game, this is kind of expensive, so I'd really recommend waiting until a little bit later game um, to buy axes and get wood and stuff. You wanna make sure that you can unlock all your plots first and then do all the resource collecting. So we're gonna craft, let's craft five axes. One, two, three, four, five axes total because every time we kick down one of these trees, there's five trees down here that you could farm for wood. Every time you knock one down, it costs one axe. So it takes five SFL to be able to harvest all of the wood at the bottom. 
Uh, and the reason why I'm not doing a lot of wood harvesting right now is because if you go to craft, you go to rare, and you check out the woody beavers, well, if you have a woody beaver, it increases your wood drops by 20%. If you have the apprentice, trees recover 50% faster. And if you have the foreman, you can cut down trees without axes. So I'll be saving up and definitely trying to get one of these guys on April 15th or 16th when uh, minting is live. Okay, but that's how to get wood. That's what she said. Next resource you want is stone. To get stone, go back into craft, and then you've got your pickaxe. There's several stone spots on the map, one right here in the bottom right, and then one right here all the way on the left side of the map. So we're gonna craft three pickaxes and then just go to town and harvest some stone. There we go, that's two. And then on the bottom left, that is three. Great. Now, what do you do with your stone? Going back into craft, the next item is a stone pickaxe used to collect iron. We're gonna craft two of these stone pickaxes because there are two piece places where you can get iron on your map. One is on the right side over here. Boom, that's three iron. And then the second place is on the top left, kind of hiding up here in the corner of your, of your farm. That's the next iron spot. And then with your iron, you can go back to craft. And the final one here that you can do now, at least, is the iron pickaxe used to collect gold. And the gold is up here. Now, I already mined it, but that's where you find your gold. That's where it will be. Trees take two hours to recover. Stone takes four hours to recover. Iron takes 12 hours and gold takes 24 hours. So that's kind of, you know, how much you can farm of that per day. And then also a big part of this game is the barn and basically doing animals and raising animals. Now I don't have this unlocked quite yet, so I can't really show you how it works, but know that this is a big, a big part of this game, which leads us to the strategy section of today's video. Although Sunflower Land is super duper simple because a reminder that this is still the beta version of this game. This game is gonna get a lot cooler, a lot more complex, a lot more fun in the future, and they've even sneak peeked and teased a couple of really, really awesome ideas that they intend on implementing. But for now, the game's pretty simple. But even still, it could be really as complicated and strategic as you want it to be. And there's a couple of different guides and tools that are really gonna help you maximize your gameplay, including this NFT Army Sunflower Land Spreadsheet. This is like the full, comp again, this could get as nerdy as you want it to be. This is the full comprehensive spreadsheet on Sunflower Land, how things works, the profitability, the resources, the XP for farming you know, specific kinds of plants, the, the farming versus the gathering uh, skill tree, as you can see right here. There there is a lot, a lot of strategy, a lot of nuance in this game. It is honestly, again, as complex as you want it to be. And if you like the link for this and also the white paper, which gives a pretty good comprehensive guide on uh, how things kind of work in the game. For example, farming, you know, here are your crops, right? Sunflower takes a minute, potatoes takes five minutes, pumpkins 30 minutes, carrots an hour. You can see how long each plant takes. Here are the recipes. This is These are the rep recipes that you'll need to get the goblins out of the way as well. That's here on the white paper. The links for the both of these um, will be in my Discord server. They're in the Discord server in the SFL. Uh, section. So if you want access to all this, just join the Discord. Link in the description. But let me give a couple of tips to maximize your gameplay because again, I have been playing this over the last couple of weeks and I think I have made some decent progress. Tip number one, plan your farming schedule around your life schedule. The cool part about Sunflower Land is that because each seed takes a different amount of time to grow, you can kind of work this game around your life. For example, when I go to sleep at night, I'll always plant cauliflower seeds because they take eight hours to grow and they give a pretty good yield. As we see, I've got 139 cauliflower. Now, what I will say, I was saving cauliflower so that I could create the golden cauliflower. But I realized that, I mean, it's gonna take 100 gold in order to, to mint this thing. I only have 14 gold. And if you look, there's only, what, 90, 89. There's only 89 of these that could be minted. So the likelihood of me being able to farm up gold fast enough to get this is, it just won't happen. So I might as well sell uh, my cauliflower. And again, this is part of the strategy we're gonna talk about, but we're gonna sell all of this, 139 cauliflower. Oh, nice, 62 SFL, and I've got 138 total. That's actually freaking baller. That's the most I've ever had. Let's go. Now wait right there, hold on, I forgot that I lost my hat. I forgot to sell all the rest of my crops. I just wanna see, we're at 138, how high can we go? Bang, nice, bang, okay, 139. 143, 151, let's go. I'm rich. Sometimes when I have to go to the gym, I'll buy this one, which is the two hour seed, which gives me enough time to leave the house, 
go to the gym, work out, come home, shower, and then get some things done, and then my cabbage seeds are done. I set timers on my watch throughout the day or my phone so that I know when my seeds are up, and if I find myself in a, in a time where I'm just sitting here in my office, hanging out, getting some work done, that's when I'll be doing the sunflowers and the potatoes and really also the pumpkins because the sunflowers take a minute and there's 400 of them. So you're really just sitting here and every minute, minute you're like spamming sunflower seeds all over your base. These are five minutes for the potato seeds, so kind of same thing. And then if I'm ever super duper AFK, the radish seeds, it take they take a day to grow, but you buy them for 0.7 and you can sell them for 0.9975. So it's pretty good profit if you're flipping these. Uh, and, and you know, you can only log in once a day. And again, remember that once you run out of seeds, you have to sink. So it's always nice to plan your uh, farming schedule around the sinking button, which means sometimes you might wanna plant, a, you know, a couple of cauliflower, maybe like a, a, you know, five cabbage while having like, you know, 10 potato seeds down. You wanna make sure that you can basically plant and use as many of these as possible before having to sink and get them again. Cause again, you have to pay 0.1 Matic every time you sink. It's not a lot of money, but you obviously want to avoid sinking all the time. So maximizing the amount of seeds and crops that you grow at a time uh, can help with, you know, cause you don't want to use all of, all of these four and then you're just stuck waiting hours and hours and hours and days uh, to farm. Technically because these smaller ones have higher SFL yield than these bigger ones. Per hour, that is, per hour. Again, all that's on the spreadsheet. So if what I'm saying makes sense, I hope it helps. Typically, I'll have this bottom left corner right here. I'll be planting like, you know, five beetroot seeds, which takes four hours a piece. And then the rest of these I'll be using for um, these, uh, I guess, shorter timed ones. Just trying to maximize the usage of uh, different um, plants and crops. Tip number two. Plants versus animals. In this game, you could choose to either be a farmer or really a ranch hand. And that's because if you go to the home tab, there's different skills. And if you look at the skills, obviously the way that they're, uh, I guess, divvied up is, you know, to optimize either for farming with plants or ranch handing with animals because your level five skill, which I kind of picked on accident, I almost wish I didn't because I, I would much rather, you know, play with the animals than with crops, but I picked the green thumb. Crops are worth 5% more in increased mutant crop chances, right? Or you can pick the barn manager, which means animals yield 10% more goods, increased mutant animal chances. Chance, yeah, right. And then when I hit farming level 10, I can either choose seed specialist or wrangler. Again, this is, you're either choosing between uh, farming crops or farming animals. Two different strategies, different game styles for different people. I just kind of like the whole crop farming thing better because you're already, doing this at the beginning of the game. Uh, and and you, you know, the most progress is made here and it kind of takes a while to get to the barn. So I might as well have my, you know, farming or my XP going towards my farming because this is kind of what's funding the entire base. But again, this is, you know, different strategies for different people. Tip number three, optimize your gameplay for the items that you want to craft. Looking into the barn, there's different rare items here and these all cost different in-game uh, materials. Like if you want to try to get one of the golden eggs, you need 50 gold and 150 eggs. So you want to optimize your gameplay to be able to acquire these resources as fast as possible. You want to get the barn unlocked quickly and you want to get the gold up to 50 as fast as you can, which means you're going to want to set timers and make sure that every 24 hours you're coming over here and you're hitting this gold block and getting as much gold as you can. And then also over here in the shop, there's these rare items as well. Like if you want to try to get the golden cauliflower, you know, you want to grind, you want to basically plant and save as much cauliflower as possible. Same thing with gold. If you want the mysterious parsnip, you're going to want to get 500 parsnips and 50 gold or the, the carrot sword, 2000 carrots. You want to be planting carrots all day long, not selling them. You want to optimize your gameplay for the items that you want to craft. Same thing here. I'm already ready for Woody the Beaver. I'm going to go the, the wood route for sure. And the final strategy, figure out your gameplay style and create a strategy for it. The cool thing about Sunflower Land is that there is an infinite amount of ways to play this game. There's different strategies, there's different items to optimize for, and once the full game comes out, there's gonna be even more complexity. So it's important to identify a strategy for yourself, a way that you wanna play the game, so that you can optimize your gameplay for that. And what I mean by that is, Let's say you want to be a farmer. You want to be the best farmer possible. Well, to be a farmer and the best one possible, for starters, you got to unlock, you have to unlock wheat. And to unlock wheat, you have to come over to this guy. And then you need to get this pie. So you have to go to the kitchen and you've got to craft the radish pie. Well, you need 60 
of the, uh, what, 60 radishes. So you gotta go and plant 60 radishes, save them over the you know course of a couple of days, craft your freaking little pie here, give it to this goblin, go up, and then you can start optimizing for the barn. But that means you need wheat, so then you need to come down to the shop, you need to be able to buy wheat. And now wheat and radishes, well, they cost SFL to buy and to plant, and you're not reselling them for profit, so at the same time, you're also gonna wanna be planting a bunch of these other crops right here and selling them for profit to be able to make the SFL that you need in order to fund your, well, your chicken coop operation. Because there's also these rares in here, the chicken coop. You're gonna wanna try to farm 100 wood, you're gonna focus on 50 gold, 2,000 eggs and 50 SFL. You'll have to save SFL as you're playing, spending and buying. Or if you're like me and you want to really wanna focus on this whole like wood gathering thing, well, you need 200 wood and 50 SFL. And then for this guy, you'll need 500 wood and this guy, 5,000 wood. So you're gonna to wanna to be crafting five axes multiple times a day and chopping trees down as quick as possible to maximize the amount of wood that you have in your inventory, you're gonna to wanna to be going in, getting your your pickaxes, your iron pickaxe, going up here, nailing down the gold and getting as much gold per day. But doing that's expensive, so you'll also have to be using your farm to buy and sell and make as much SFL as possible to fund your wood operations. Pick a strategy and strategize for it. <laughs> it's complicated if you want it. And that's the Sunflower Land Comprehensive Beginner's Guide, how to get in the game, how to play it, and then just overall what the game's about and how to go about it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Video. And if you're interested in Sunflower Land, again, all the links are down in the description. Join the Discord server, my GM7 Discord server, link in the description, uh, to come in and have a community of people to be able to bounce ideas off of theory craft. And again, we'll have a bunch of helpful guides and information linked in the Discord server as well to help through your journey of Sunflower Land. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. Peace out, friends.